I find putting myself on stories being it's daft, it's silly occasionally. It sort of potentially sets me aside from, from others doing similar. And, you know, that maybe that's my niche. I don't know. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Adventure Labs podcast. My name is Connor Rickey. I'm your host of the podcast and the co-founder here at Adventure Labs. If you're new here, the Adventure Labs podcast is all about connecting with fellow adventure creators and hearing about the stories behind the content that they create. Now, today I'm sitting down with Tom. That's at Tom Watt Photo on Instagram, T-O-M-W-A-T Photo. If you want to check out his feed, he's got some amazing stuff. Uh, of course, I recorded this intro after we did the podcast, so I know what's to come, but it's a really fun one. We talked about a lot of different subjects, tons and tons of good advice from Tom in there, lessons learned for those, especially just starting out in photography. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's podcast. Hope you enjoy. Tom, Tom Watt, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, it's a misconception. That's, uh, that's just my online alter ego. My name's Tom Watkinson. Ah, Watkinson. Okay, to, I didn't even know that. See, yeah, to give me some internet a- uh, anonymity, I guess. That ah, makes it easy. You're you're a smart man. Well, <laughs> welcome to away. the, yeah, <laughs> welcome to the Adventure Labs podcast. Uh, we've this is our first time actually meeting sort of uh, digitally face to face, so I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Tom and I just know each other through Instagram, so this is the first official chat between us. So, Tom, yeah, nice to meet you, man. Yeah, man. So stoked. I think it's going to be a good time. I'm excited for this one. Um, so how about we start out by just giving us a little background on your story, the style of shooting you like to do. I'll give you the stage. Yeah, where to begin? Yeah, no. Uh, well, that, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so my name's Tom Watkinson. I'm 32 years old. I'm from originally from a place um, in North Wales, which is part of the United Kingdom. Anyone that isn't familiar? Um, and currently I live in a place called Nottingham, which is fairly well known, which is sort of in the Midlands of, of the UK. Um, and I am, well, let's say, let's say unofficially slash officially, and I explain why, a landscape uh, and also wedding photographer as well. Um, but contrary to what people believe, it's not actually my, my full-time job. I work as a civil engineer full-time and sort of photography is sort of my passion. Um, I think potentially, well, I say hopefully eventually would we'll, we'll move into it full time. Maybe probably later on before we talk into how potentially I might go into that, but I'm still trying to figure that one out myself. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing photography for what feels like an eternity really. Um, I'd say in my own personal sort of opinion, I'd say over the last sort of maybe six, seven years, I've really sort of found my sort of love for it. Um, I started shooting in, well, actually, no, let's go, let's go back even further than that. I think I, I was always playing around with Photoshop and this was, must've been maybe from when I was 10 years, eight, 10 years old, I had, I think it was Photoshop five. I think that was 1998. And I would love just creating in Photoshop sort of digital art. I hadn't taken any pictures. I'd get everything I could from Google and, 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 and just create in Photoshop. Um, since then, Photoshop has become far more advanced than, than even I could uh, sort of understand and, and work with nowadays. And so I'm more of a Lightroom, keep it simple kind of guy. I do sort of mess around in Photoshop where I can. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was always into into Photoshop. And then I think it must have been 2005, I got a sort of compact camera, started playing around, messing around with different angles. I'd, I'd, we'd always go and do um, sort of urban exploration. So we're going to explore old British mills and old uh, old asylums, old hospitals and places like that in, in North Wales. And um, that's where I started sort of developing sort of an eye for photography and, again, bringing editing back into that then. Um, so sort of the, the style I'd go for then was was very much HDR. So this was back in the days where everyone would have Flickr accounts and you'd see everything sort of crazy colours and crazy dynamic yeah, H- ranges. HDR was so cool back in the day, like hey, like having it, those it, just super high res, like like yeah. sharpness all the way up, like all that contrast, like tons of contrast, like that was the look. Connor, we need to bring it back. <laughs> we need to bring this Dude, back. It's not a bad look, honestly. I'm kind of down. I mean, all the iPhones are doing it in camera for you now, so hey, uh, you first on Adventure there. Labs. You first, and I'll follow. We'll see how it goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But no, the, I mean, after that, I mean, I, I got my first real camera, I guess it a real camera, 
Um, I got a, a Canon 1000D, I think it was 2007. So I was still still studying then. And I just used to go out all the time, just all the time taking photos. I'd, I'd go out in the middle of the night and my housemates were like, what are you doing? Why, why are you taking photos in the middle of the night? What, what are you doing? Is they just thought creep. it was, it was cre- Yeah, creep, right? <laughs> um, but I just, that was it. That's how I, how I learned. I'd, I'd go out, do long exposure photos. You know, at the time I was like, this is the best thing ever. Look at this photo, you know? But, you know, looking back now, I'm like, well, that's awful. But at the time it was, it was amazing. You know, I, I loved being able to see what I produced, something you, you couldn't see with the naked eye, you know? Um, I was way off being able to shoot, take photographs of the Milky Way back then, but I loved it. I'd, I'd, I'd mess around with fire wheels and things like that, um, LED lights, you know, and it's, for me, that's how I learned. You know, I, I, I enjoyed that. Um, I didn't have friends that were into photography back then either. Um, this was like, I guess it was, was this before Instagram, I guess? When, when, when yeah, was Instagram? 2010, like 11? Or, I don't know. Oh, was it 12? I don't maybe? know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> No, definitely not 14. Like, yeah, 12, something like that. Yeah, so it was just, yeah, it was just, there was nothing really to base it on besides, like, seen on Flickr or in magazines or whatever. So I just I just go out and just just play around. Um, so I did that for years. I mean, my my, my first camera was, I must have took, what, what's the shutter life on a, a Canon? About 100,000 photos? I think I must have taken 120,000 plus or something on that first camera. So I really got my use out of it, and I had... I had the stock lens, which was a 24 to 35 mil. And then I think I had a Tamron 70 to 200. Nice. But I never, I, never, I never used the 70 to 200. I, d- I didn't really sort of find a love for it back then. I was always on, on my 24 to 35. But it wasn't until maybe a few years later, maybe five years later, I upgraded to a Canon 6D. And I thought, okay, I really, really enjoy this. It's time to, to get a new camera. Um, some new lenses and I, I got a one of the L series the 16 to 35 Canon lenses um, and I loved it I loved full frame um, could I ever go back to cropped I don't know but I loved full frame I still do and um, yeah I got myself a, a newer 70 to 200 lens a better one and yeah that, that from there I just really found my passion for it and I think when I'd finished studying I was able to travel a bit more because I had I was working, I had money to do it, I had a car, and I really started exploring areas around me, sort of traveling to the place near me called the Peak District, which is sort of central to the to the UK. And then I'd sort of venture further back into North Wales, where I was from originally. And just from there, it just sort of spiraled. And I think, I don't know whether photography led me to the outdoors, the love of the outdoors. And then I don't know if the... Perhaps they need each other now. I think my my love for the outdoors needs photography. Photography is what pushes me to to go outdoors, to get to these places, to get up at stupid times in the morning. But then, mm-hmm. equally, take one away. I think they need each other, but I think they just they just drive each other constantly now. So yeah, so that was what sort of early 2010, 2012 time, I think. And then yeah, since then it's just it's just spiraled and spiraled and spiraled and. Yeah, just I love it. I love it. I just, just oh, it's all I think about to be honest. Weekends for me, even sort of time off, it's just planning trips. Where can I go? When's the next? You know, constantly checking the weather forecast night after night. You know, my wife is about. Sort of, she's sick of it. She, she she hates it. She says you need to let this go. It's it's an addiction. But I'm <laughs> constantly checking. I'm looking. Okay, when's the next cloud inversion? When can I predict this cloud inversion? And I'm I'm going over. I'm going the night before, staying in the camper van, getting up at 3 a.m. You know, a good hour and a half before sunrise. You know, that is dur- during the summer, and just waiting out, just, just on the hope for that perfect sunrise. Yeah, it's addicting, <laughs> right? It's like a drug. It is. It is a drug, and I, it's I know a good thing full to be well. Addicted to. Oh, totally. Yeah, I know full well though. If 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 I go tomorrow morning, which uh, you know, if I go and get that what I consider perfect inversion or perfect sunrise or whatever. There'll only be another one to get after that. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like, like that's you're the never, drive. Never totally satisfied. You know, you hit you hit one mark and then you're hungry for the next. And yeah. then the next. And then the next, right? But I mean And that's why you're still here doing this how many years yeah. later? You know? Yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah, I and mean, it's it's the drive, isn't it? And yeah, I, I just I just love it. It's 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 what um it what's it's what gets me out of bed. It's what um keeps me going. And yeah, I think I think as well, I, I 
more and more it's it's actually less about the photography um i think early on it was about getting the photo and i think as i've got older and a bit more sort of less concerned about social media and you know i i, I enjoy social media i think it's important as well but i think i'm more for the experience as well you know i'm i'm, I'm finding more and more I'm, I'm putting my camera to one side although like I said, these these sunrises and sunsets, which I'm sort of somewhat addicted to, mm-hmm. I enjoy taking the photos there. But for me, the excitement is watching it unfold. Days where it doesn't happen and it's just a disaster, I've enjoyed the excitement of is it about to happen, you know? And it's like mm-hmm. a few days build up to that, you know? So when it does happen, it's great. And if it doesn't, I still enjoy the, the pursuit anyway. But, you know, if it was that easy, then it may not be as enjoyable when the times are good, you know, when conditions are good, you got to have those missed sunrises and sunsets and the clouds just don't open up to be able to appreciate a good sunset. If they were all good sunsets, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't be fun or it wouldn't be cool. Right. Yeah. So no, totally. I mean, there's, there's a place um, I've been going to for, excuse me, maybe four, five years now. And it's a place called Anglesey, and it's off the northwest coast of Wales. And um, there's a place called Penmon Point, and it is a, a lighthouse just off the coast. And it's known for having bioluminescent plankton. So in the middle of the night, this plankton sort of accumulates in the bay, and it can somewhat seems to be randomly just illuminates the whole bay bright blue. And you get it in parts of America, you get it in parts of, sort of South Africa, you get it in like New Zealand, and we're lucky enough to get it in the UK. And I've been shooting this for years, time after time. I was there last weekend, staring into the, the darkness for hours and hours and hours, just hoping for this thing to happen. And I've yet to see it, you know? I, I've been there, and then the day after, I've, I've seen it's happened, and I've just missed it time after time, but I'll keep going, I'll keep going. I lose faith occasionally, but a couple of weeks go by, and I think, going again let's do this you know so yeah. it's tough but it's 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 part of it i guess yeah totally you'll you'll get you'll get to see him one day cool. i believe in you just like i'll see the northern lights one day haven't that's another haven't one, been man. able to do that yet but that's have you tried i, I no <laughs> that's <laughs> part of it then <laughs> and and covid isn't helping either can't it's not. travel but it's, uh, not. it's been tough I, yeah it's tough man I, I won't believe those northern lights until i see him you know, the photos, yeah. they look sick, but until I see that light in the, you know, in the sky, I just, I can't believe it for myself, but <laughs> dude, that's, <laughs> we're going off topic here, but yeah, we are. Um, I'm interviewing you. That's, I'm in, dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on, uh, give me the mic back here. But anyways, I'm, I'm like just inspired hearing your story, like how long you've been at it. It sounds like you're totally still passionate about it, still in it for the right reasons. You know, I, I see a lot of people that want to get into photography just for the sake of being a photographer, right? They think it's cool. They want to be an influencer. um, And that just doesn't last, right? Like photography is fun, but it's not easy. It's super expensive, you know, maybe to get into, it's not too bad. You get one, one body and one lens or whatever, but then Mm -hmm. that body turns into three. And then, you know, that one lens turns into six. It's not always important, not always important for beginners. You know, I've, I've worked my way through them. And even now I I have a reasonably basic setup. You don't need loads of lenses. You don't need the most expensive body. I've, I've sort of, I'm on a, I I use a, I still have my Canon 6D as a backup, but I I use a Sony a7R three and people always say to, Oh, what what gear do you use? What body do you use? And I always say the same thing. You don't necessarily need to buy the most expensive gear straight away. You know, work up to it. You know, the reason I use that is because I do, I do wedding photography. You know, I want the, I, you know, I want the extra megapixels. I need the better autofocus. You know, right. somebody who's going out trying to do, you know, just starting out doing landscape photography, just, just start off with something basic. You don't need to spend that kind of money. You know, right. Well, using Quinn from Ever Changing Horizons as an example, he built his whole career oh, yeah. shooting on a phone. He's always preached that like gear's not super yeah. important. Like, and he yeah. has clips on Instagram that are still going viral. Like four or five years later and it's literally like a pan on his phone you know but the landscape is so sick and the effort that he took to get to that spot is what makes it special nobody's captured that stuff before Mm -hmm. you know like i mean it wasn't phones it's good with phones i don't i don't mind phones i follow a lot of accounts which which use iphones 
you know there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of sameness across instagram sometimes there's a lot of people doing the same things and i've seen people who's, who, who started out with iphones and they've moved on to digital slrs and if anything some accounts have just ended up coming the same as just other digital sr accounts and i, I quite like the the rawness of, of of people taking pictures with iphones it's sort of it's more natural it's out of the pocket snap you know there's there's, there's more sometimes i feel there's more passion in it particularly on like hiking pages and it's just more, sometimes it can feel a bit more personal, mm-hmm. you know? So that's why sometimes I'm more, I don't do it myself enough. I, I, I struggle with, with, with iPhones, you know, but some people do it really well and it works for them and uh, I, I don't mind it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, me personally, like there's been countless times. I mean, I'd say, I'd wager to say almost every time I go out on a shoot, there's like moments where I prefer my phone over my camera. Like, I need a wider lens or something, you know, like maybe I only have a 50 mil on my camera and 85 at the moment. And that's all I brought with me. And then there's this landscape that would look sick with a wide angle. So Mm -hmm. I bust out my phone and my camera is literally in the other hand and I'm shooting the landscape with my phone. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. man. It's it's, that's, I'm glad we went down this rabbit hole of talking (laughs) about gear because that's the same thing with me. Everyone DMs, what kind of gear are you using? What are you editing with? Blah, blah, blah. People get so wrapped up in the gear because that's what they think makes the photographer or the videographer yeah. but you talk to anyone who's actually doing it and it's not the case at all you know no nah. whatsoever nah. so i totally agree totally agree but to an extent i do want to mention that gear does make a difference you know like everyone has their own opinion on that but for me like like you said you need a certain camera to do your wedding work and that's what is yeah for me now money in your gear. pocket to write so totally yeah for me now gear does make a difference 10 years ago, it didn't necessarily make a difference. For beginners, it's learn to use the basics and develop from there, find out what you need, and then purchase into that. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Like you said earlier, you know, you get you get a piece of equipment, you completely max it out to the point where it's literally breaking. You literally have Been to there. buy a new camera <laughs> because it's broken because you've put, you know, however many shutter actuations on it over what it should have. And then you literally need to get a new camera. Like you don't shoot on that camera for, you know, a week and then learn how to use aperture Mm. and then like, Mm. Oh, I'm a pro now. I'm going to go buy, you know, an R5 or something like that. Yeah. 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 You know, and funny, I just say that I I put a date on this podcast. Now, if someone's listening to this in 10 years, and R5, (laughs) that thing's a piece of junk. What do you shoot with? (laughs) So I own a GH5 and that's pretty much what I mainly shoot with because I shoot mainly video, less photos. Yeah. Um, but Makes I sense. have a pretty rad relationship with Sony to where I can basically rent out like Sony stuff whenever I need to. So if I have a trip coming up, nice. I'll basically be able to get like an a seven R three or four with some lenses or an a seven three, um, for like a week or two. And then I'll take that on my mm. trip and then I'll use that for photography. So, um, I, I'm it's a shame you're not next closer. purchase soon though. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. I said, it's a shame you're not closer. <laughs> I know, right? I know. After using that, yeah, yeah, but um, That's cool. yeah, I don't know. I'm still contemplating my next purchase here. The there's just so many cameras dropping, and uh, I, you know, yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I, I've had uh, friends of mine who who've, who've bought Sony, and within within months, they they've moved on to Fuji. And there's there's pros and cons to each. I mean, I've seen their Fuji setup, and it weighs hardly anything. Mm-hmm. And they're so small. Know, I, so small. I see the advantage of it because this is how like my style and sort of my attitude to things has developed. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, my trips now are less about the photography. The photography is still important to me, but I, I, I find more I'm doing longer backpacking trips. I'm doing longer hikes. I'm carrying, you know, I've got tents. I've got sleeping mats, sleeping bags, water for a few days, food, you know, all this kind of weight to carry. And more and more I'm, I'm thinking, maybe my gear is too heavy. I'm carrying a big 70 to 200 lens. And it's, you know, I'm also contemplating getting a 200 to 600 mil lens, which is even bigger, <laughs> you know, and then again, I can't carry this, you know, and you see the Fuji setup and it, it, it just disappears into a tiny bag. And I'm thinking that's, that's good, you know, yeah. and it yeah. has its advantages, but you know, I think for me, I, I, I like, I like a bigger body on a camera. I like to turn up to a wedding with a, a, a good sized camera it gives the right impression mm-hmm. you know i think if i was to turn up with a small fuji camera people would go what's is, is this is this the photographer you know but they're, they're just as good that's the thing they're just as yeah. good it's just um 
you know, I, I'm conscious of that. I don't know whether that's, is, is there any sense to that? I don't know, but no, you know, hundred percent. I'm right there with you. I, I shoot a ton of to- uh, corporate video production, like, you know, brand story videos for, um, you know, companies that sell products on Amazon or, uh, you know, service-based businesses. And it, it's the yeah. same thing. Like I could show up with an a seven three in one lens and kill it just as hard as if I bust out the big FS 700 that I have <laughs> with the seven inch monitor, with the follow focus, with tripods, with too many lights, with too many yeah. sliders. And you know, the final product literally might be better on that a seven three with yeah. one lens, but yeah, man, the client that the market that doesn't know cameras exactly. So there's truth to it. And, and that's like a little industry secret here. Like I feel like no one really publicly talks about it as we are now, whatever, but that's a, honestly a pro tip like if you want to get higher paying gigs like look the part you know it, it's like it sounds terrible to say but it's so true like as long as you can mm-hmm. get the work done with that equipment of course then mm-hmm. great you know like i know people who have gotten gigs because they've had a certain camera you know and it's like it's a shame really? to oh yeah i mean well when you get into like reds and aries yeah and stuff oh like yeah, that, yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah. people demand a certain camera so like more dp stuff video on Mm. the video side but um yeah isn't that funny isn't that funny how like strange if you look more legit like people will pay you more like especially when it comes to weddings corporate stuff Mm. um and and it's funny you mentioned like you know at the same time you want to buy that 200 to 600 but then you're also like oh i want the fuji that's super tiny with like one little pancake lens because that also Mm. sounds awesome Mm. i have this like same internal conflict all the time and i think it's because i have sort of a wide range of content that i enjoy shooting and i need to shoot and it makes it really hard to stick to one set of gear because every camera has a different um purpose every lens has Mm -hmm. a different purpose every piece Mm -hmm. of gear is meant for a certain situation right so if you're shooting weddings but then you're also shooting travel content two completely different setups right there and gear is expensive so that sucks right so then you're trying to make do on both with like a, a happy medium. I, think, I mean, I, I do, I do when it comes to weddings again, I, I, I mean, I started doing them just, just out of sort of my own sort of passion for photography. And I started doing them as just to sort of break the mold of, of what I was doing and just see, see, to throw myself another challenge basically. And for me, it was just making a bit of extra money on the side that would pay for gear, pay for extra lenses, th- things like, you know, things I, I, I do need. Um, for, for what I want to sort of develop into or maybe you know, do more weddings or maybe go full time into something else. I don't know. But yeah, that, 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 was, the, uh, that, that was the aim with that. But I, I shoot, most of the weddings I shoot with an 85mm prime. For me, that's like the, a good lens I, I, I sort of enjoy and I find the sort of perfect for the sort of that sort of candid sort of wedding photography. I, I do occasionally sort of switch to a, a wide angle for sort of things like group shots and stuff. But um, for, for my landscape, yeah, it's it, it's mainly you know wide sixteen to thirty five, and um, then anything above sort of hundred mil, really, I shoot, I shoot that. You know, it's 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 sort of I've never I've never found a middle ground. I've I've never really shoot fifty mil. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I struggle with it. I don't find a use for it. But that's again, that's my personal preference. I know people that love a fifty mil, but either shoot super wide or are on into telephoto ranges. It's um, everyone but I'm, I'm happy with my setup at current you know it's this 200 mil to 600 mil lens is more of a a luxury you know i think mm-hmm. it would be i think it'll bring a different dynamic to sort of my landscape photography just being able to really sort of draw in sort of the distance on some some mountains and sort of explore different compositions and you know but it's um it's a big bit of kit to carry around it's um i think that's sort of i'm i'm really sort of holding back until I was, um, I'm sure I, uh, I could uh, make real good use of it. You see, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, this is it again. You don't need, you don't need a massive setup necessarily. I think for the likes of yourself, you're you're delivering all sorts of formats, um, totally. and it, 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 it's needed there. But for me, it, it can be quite simple. You know, right on. Talk to me a little bit about sort of your your intro into doing weddings. Like you mentioned starting yeah. because it'd be a great way to invest in new gear there's i did that's how i started out you know like that's was doing weddings and you learn a ton weddings are fast paced they're difficult yeah. you learn you got to learn the settings on your camera like the back of your hand or else you won't survive in a wedding like 
you improve really fast. It's a great way to save up for gear. Maybe yeah. it's not your end goal, right? But you're yeah. going to learn a lot. You're going to make some money. You're going to make connections. Just more time with the camera in hand that you're getting paid it to really do. It really is. Right? Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about um, sort of, I guess, your advice for someone who might be just starting out and considering doing weddings and your experience with that. I think don't be afraid to do work for, for free when it comes to like a wedding. I think it's a good way to get some get some material to work with so you've got something to present. I did, I was an assistant photographer um, to somebody else and that was my intro to it. It gave me that sort of base sort of set of material from which I could start promoting. Um, it gave me the, the experience to understand the structure of a day, like, you know, it's relatively straightforward, but it was, yeah, it was just like you said, it's getting an idea about settings and being able to react quickly. And I think, I think as well, I think, yeah, I'd say primarily to see if you can assist somebody else first time, it just gives you that bit of comfort, you know, cause it can be nerve wracking, you know, I was still a bit nervous when I came to do my second one, you know, and I was like, I was on my own and I, you know, it went well, you know, I've been taking photos for a long time, but perhaps somebody that, that is, is newer to it has wanted to go into that. I can see how it could be intimidating, you know, um, I just moved, moved set up when I did my first wedding and it was, it was unusual cause I was still, I still had the muscle memory from my previous camera. So trying to change settings and it was, yeah, it was tough. It, you know, you, you, it's, 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 it's a hard day, you know, but, um, yeah, sh shoot, shoot a wedding for free uh, and, and go from there. And, uh, I find it difficult to turn them down now. Um, as I said, it's not my full-time job, but I, I struggle to turn them down because it's it's all from word of mouth. I say a lot, lot of my business um, with, with weddings, and I, I fear that the more I turn them down, the the less they'll less they'll come. So I just keep saying yes. You know, yes, maybe man. one day, maybe one day I'll, I'll make the switch over to, to full time. But I'm, I've got this internal battle of: Do I want to do wedding photography full time? I don't know. Is it what I'm really passionate about? I, I enjoy it. I, I love it. Photography is my passion. I do enjoy it. If I was to be financially dependent on it, would it bring a different dynamic? Would I no longer enjoy it? I, that, I think that's my that's my worry. You know, mm -hmm. if if I could, I'd I'd probably want to be sort of working in photography, but in sort of the outdoors aspect. You know, landscape photography, working with outdoor brands. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but again, it's it's the industry seems to be. Well, it seems to me it seems to be saturated with everybody who wants to work with outdoor brands, and it seems to be difficult to get into. And I think my quarrel with the industry is a lot of outdoor brands can throw products at anybody on Instagram and get hundreds and hundreds of pictures and free promotions for for nothing. So photographers don't get paid for, for work because it, well, understandably a, br a brand can, can get promotions relatively quite easy, you know, and I, I'm a sucker for it. I, I, I take free stuff occasionally and I'll take a few pictures of it and, and, you know, I'm contributing to the problem. Yeah. Complain about <laughs> it as well, <laughs> you know, but it's yeah. a difficult one, isn't it? How, how, how does somebody, how does somebody pursue that? You know? Yeah. No, I, it's a question. I, it's a question for you, probably, because you're doing well. <laughs> hey, I, I'm doing similar stuff, to be honest. You know, I do a ton of free work for brands that have cool products that I believe in that yeah, need some totally. photos, and and especially a lot of these companies aren't aren't the largest. They don't have the biggest budget, um, yeah. so you know, understandably, they can't throw a few thousand dollars at you to yeah. you know deliver ten photos or whatever. You have to look at it from from a business perspective, that like an R, you know return on okay. investment perspective. Are yes. your 10 photos you're delivering really going to, obviously they have to break even on that investment. And then, you know, ideally two, three, 10 X what they've put in, right. Cause they took yeah. the risk on, uh, in the first place. So it has to be worth their time. So it's definitely, it's definitely tricky. And I think a lot of people on Instagram make it look like they're being paid more than they are for this yeah. brand work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so a requirement, also, isn't it? You, you have to, you have to say it's a paid promotion, even though you've been, Send you do, out. but I mean, they're pretty sneaky nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You know, people really sneak that stuff in. Like, you know, you just don't know what the motive is. But, but I totally hear you there. And I think something that's not talked about enough is like what you just said: turning your passion into a full-time career has the potential to ruin it for you. 
You know, mm-hmm. I, I know a lot of photographers who have gone full time and burnt out, you know, and then mm-hmm. had to take a, you know, one to three year break from it, not even touch a camera really? to reignite that spark. Yeah. And mm-hmm. myself, I've, I mean, I've, I'm essentially full time on this because I run a video production company in yeah. addition to Adventure Labs. So I'm shooting almost every day. I'm constantly editing. And there can be days where I'm just like, I don't even want to look at the camera. Right. Mm. But then I'm so passionate about it that then, you know, I get some sleep and then the next day I grab my cup of coffee and I'm ready to go again. I'm like, ready to go. To go. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go. And, and, and that comes back to being, you have to be passionate about it. If yeah. you want to, if you do want to make that leap into a full-time yeah. career. But what I was going to say is that something that I don't think is talked about enough is just being okay with photography being, uh, you know, a side gig, a side hustle, you know, you could yeah. be doing brain work, but that's in addition to, whatever your nine to five is. And it sounds like yeah. you have pretty good self-awareness with that when it comes to like, you, it's a balance. you accept, right. It's that balance. You know? And so talk to me a little bit about that balance, because it seems like you have a good, pretty good understanding yeah. of it. It's for me, I think, I think it's more become nowadays, it's become an outlet for me to sort of escape from sort of my nine to five. Um, you know, I, th- I think whatever profession I work in, there's going to be stresses, there's going to be, worries there's going to be difficulties you know challenges whatever i do there's going to be that and for me where whatever i work in i i need an escape you know so for me my nine to five is whatever my escape is the my addiction to sunrises sunsets photography hiking wild camping camper van weekends you know all these outdoors things that are sort of centered around sort of well, yeah, I suppose yeah, centered around my photography or, you know, that, that is, that is how I achieve my balance. It is, it is, you know, it, throughout the week, I, I think oh, another day I've got to, I've got to get up. Oh, I really, I don't have the energy day to get up and tackle this, but then come the weekend, I'm awake at the crack of dawn going, right, let's, let's tackle this weekend. I'm going up this hill. I'm going to sit there for three hours and wait for sunrise and get these conditions. And I'm going to hike over this ridge, take some more photos here. I'm going to camp here tonight. And then I'll come back Sunday night, ready to go and tackle my working week. And because of that, come Monday morning, I'm, I'm refreshed. I'm ready to tackle my week. And for me, it's just a way of escaping, you know, I think, I think I need it more in, in that respect as well nowadays. And I love it. You know, I, 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 I wouldn't change the, the balance I've got now uh, for anything, really. And that, that's partly why I'm sort of, I'd be conscious about doing it full time. But I respect the people that do it full time because they're hard workers and they, 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 they just, they've got some drive in them, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think I'd have the same drive. But for me, I've got the balance. And unless it gets to 50-50 and I can tip the scales, maybe one day I'll, I'll take that risk. We'll see how it, see how it develops. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that the content you are putting out on the weekends is incredibly inspiring. Like you can feel you, that, man. that excitement and energy in your photos and your work and your stories when you're out on those backpacking trips or shooting. And that has a ton of value. Like yeah. people, that's yeah. why influencers exist. People like to sort of live vicariously through other people, right? It's inspiration. That's what adventure labs is. It's ins- inspiration totally, for people to totally get out is. and shoot and pursue their passions and, and, live a full life, you know, live in the present. Mm. And what you're doing is something that you love. You're just going out and shooting and documenting it and putting it on the mm. internet and sharing it the world mm. with the world. But not only is that self-fulfilling for you, but that's, that's super valuable to other people who might desperately yeah. need that escape. You know, their escape for yeah. the weekend might be watching your, your adventure, right? Yeah. I do get messages. I get messages and I, I, I show my wife sometimes some of these messages and that people and people are so nice. It's like mm-hmm. you get, you get so many nice messages from saying, Oh, thank you so much for, for this really enjoyed this. And more and more, I'm, I'm the power of an Instagram story is, is just incredible. And I think more and more people, if my advice to somebody would say, get, get yourself on an Instagram stories. Don't be afraid of just being yourself. Don't, you know, it depends. Some accounts need to be a bit more serious because they're, they're, they're businesses and that's the profession. But for me, I can, I can be myself, which is usually a bit of an idiot on Instagram stories, having a laugh, being stupid, you know, not, you know, 
people just think I'm just trying to entertain them. But now I'm just just having a bit of a laugh with mates, doing some hiking, talking about composition, showing my frustrations at how things are unfolding in whatever I'm doing, or you know, it's just it's raw stuff. And people, people, yeah, I get comments all the time. People just like they're like, love this, thanks so much. And it, more than anything, it makes me it drives me to do more of it. Honest, you know, I, I really enjoy that side of it, and I think people with with Instagram accounts that are wanting to develop followings, put yourself on your stories, be yourself. People people appreciate seeing the person behind the camera. I think for me, I found it, it potentially sets me aside from a lot of other a lot of other similar you know landscape photographers in the UK. You know. We do, you know, a lot of people shoot a lot of the same locations. Yeah, of course we do, you know, but I find putting myself on stories being a bit daft, a bit silly occasionally, it sort of potentially sets me aside from, from others doing similar. And, you know, I sort of, that maybe that's my niche. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and it's it sounds like that's a natural evolution. Everyone puts pressure on themselves to be like, what's my niche? What's my, what am I as a photographer? But it sounds like, you know, you're just like, everything's evolving naturally because you're just yeah. doing it because you love it. Like you're not overthinking it. You're just being yourself. And, and then after doing that for a while, now you're like, Oh, maybe just being myself on my, on the stories. It's like, that is my competitive advantage. Like you're building a personal brand. And like you said, everyone's just shooting the same stuff. A lot of the content looks the exact there same. There is a lot of that. There but is a the lot end, of that. Like that is, that is, I'd say like the number one way to differentiate any brand, whether it's personal, corporate, you know, bigger company, like you said, mm -hmm. is to put your face in front of it and put a face in front of that logo or that, that company. And, and I'm trying to do it more myself. Um, you do well. I don't consider myself like it. a super extroverted person, but I definitely don't find myself being introverted either. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, you definitely, you know, you have to have a decent level of charisma, I guess, to be interesting mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. talk on stories. But I mean, that being said, I, I follow a lot of like, business people who are pretty dry, but they're dropping some fire value and, you know, so I'm well, watching yeah. it. So yeah. it really works. I don't mean to discourage anyone that's like introverted to not go on stories. That's kind of not what I meant there. I'd actually encourage you to do it because it, you'll get mm. out of your comfort zone. So if you're listening that's and you're it. kind of a quieter person, just send it, just like get on your story and start talking. And, you know, a couple might people like pe a couple people might think you're like weird or whatever. They might judge you, but people are going to judge you no matter what you do. So yeah. Just be you. Yeah. Jump on there and be you and have fun with it and just don't care about what it is. I've had it. I've had it. People, people, people sort of, you know, friends being like, why are, you, why are you putting yourself up on stories all the time? Like, and they're, so they come to it on, the, you know, their da daily feed and they're going, oh, just skip, 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 skip. Here he is rambling away again. But it's not for everyone. Some people like it. Some people don't, you know? And yeah. it's whatever, you know? It's, just it's, I... Go ahead. Sorry, I did not no, I didn't mean to catch <laughs> No, you're right. Yeah, just... It, don't don't let anybody else discourage you. Just do what you want to do. Not everything is for everybody, and don't let don't let it worry you. Yeah, totally. That's amazing advice. And you know, your friends may not be your target audience, essentially, <laughs> right? Yeah, like exactly. You, yeah. Just just because they don't enjoy what you're posting on Instagram doesn't mean you shouldn't post that stuff. There's yeah, exactly. for maybe one one buddy. You know, there might be a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a million people on the internet that are loving yeah. what you're doing, but you're not doing it because your one friend that you actually know in person is like yeah, exactly. showing their, you know, like, that's kind of <laughs> weird, dude. Like, why are you doing that? <laughs> you know, but I totally, I totally hear you. Like I have like, you know, friends whose parents, you know, I'll, I'll, I haven't seen him in a year and it's like, Oh, what's up, Mr. Influencer. You know, I, I've uh, been seeing you all over the internet. You know, it's kind of yeah. like sarcastic, but it's kind of yeah. that jab, that low key. How many jab, hashtags like, have you put on your post? Yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah they're exactly. Like, people, you know, and, and for the most part, that's like friendly, but those like little jabs can really yeah. eat away at people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this is it. I mean, a lot of people, people that aren't photographers, like I said, they don't understand why I go out at 9 p.m. in the evening and don't come back till 6 a.m. in the morning. They're like, what, what it blows them? What, what possibly can you be doing? But for me, I'm, I'm out walking, I'm out photographing, I'm finding compositions in the pitch black so I can photograph the Milky Way and do star trails. And, oh, it's, if any, you know what, if, if anything, that's probably my favorite thing to do is just to, go away in the middle of the night and everyone else is asleep. But surprisingly, you you bump into people in the middle of the night. You you, you see head torches around and it's always, you know, the photographers because they've got the red head torches, yep. you know, and yep. you're like, there's a photographer over there. And 
people are surprisingly friendly in the middle of the night, you know, and it's, uh, it's cool. I've met some cool people that I've, that I've gone out shooting with multiple times. I've met them in, in the middle of the night and it's been, I've gone on three or four trips with people before and I've still never seen them in the daylight, <laughs> you know, we've just gone out to photograph Milky Way. I've never, never really seen their faces, but uh, it's, it's a weird <laughs> thing that people don't understand. And they're saying, you're meeting up with who in the middle of the night and they don't get it. But I, I love that. I, I love that they don't get it as well. It's it's like it's it's my thing and, and other photographers that do the same. It's, it's sort of our thing, you know, and, and I yeah. enjoy it. And I enjoy the, the peace and the, 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 the quiet and just being out there in some sort of lovely conditions. And I think as well in terms of the photography aspect, clicking the shutter button and then 30 seconds later you get that image and you start to see the Milky Way and you think, I can't see that with the naked eye and that's your instant reward that's sort of your adrenaline rush and i've been out before where I've, I've been out all night in fact i've done a day of work and then i've gone out i've driven across the country and then i've been out through the whole night shooting the milky way so it's like a 24 hour stretch i've got home and all i wanted to do was open my laptop and start editing and it's that addiction to it i've gone this has been an incredible night let's get the laptop open and start editing i don't think i want to go to bed and again it's just the adrenaline of it all and that's sort of it's almost like a, just like a mini adventure. You know, you, you don't need to fly across the world and, you know, pursue, chase, you know, chasing whatever across whatever country to try and, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's this thing in social media where people think they have to travel abroad. My adventures can be on the doorstep, you know, and, and, and they're, they're exciting and I love them, you know, and I wouldn't change that for anything really. Yeah, that's incredible. That's so awesome. That's really great advice. It's like, yeah, you don't you don't have to go and spend a ton of money and and go abroad. Especially that's good. That's an awesome thing to hear right now because we can't really go abroad for the most part. Mm. You know? So figuring out the adventures you can go on and what you can shoot and can keep improving on in your own backyard, that's the right mindset. Like you don't want to get into that negative uh blaming everything on the world mindset it's like oh, i can't shoot now because i can't travel and blah 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 it's like i really appreciate that mindset that you were just talking about how it's a really positive mindset of like you can you can still go and shoot in your own backyard in fact it sounds like you almost prefer it uh, yeah you know what actually uh, again this is how how my mentality has changed i think i think maybe even social media sort of makes people think they're there's sort of there's this law to travel abroad. There's this is law to oh look at these amazing places. You see some incredible places, you know. And I've been to some of them, and they are incredible. You know, this you know we don't have amazing deserts in the UK, and we don't have you know uh, massive frozen landscapes and where you know these kind of things. You know, we we have what we have is different, but the grass isn't always greener. It's just it's just it's just it's just something different. You know, it's it's what we have here is a more and more passionate about it day by day, really. I think I've done bits of traveling. I'm, I've not done as much as other people. Um, we went to New Zealand for a month over Christmas and loved it. It's an amazing country. But I came back and I went, you know what, actually, what we've got here in the UK, we've got a lot of similar. We haven't got the same. It's, it, it is different and we loved it over there. But more and more, I'm just passionate about exploring what we've got. I mean, it, it, it was not until maybe five years ago, or even four years ago, I didn't hadn't been to Scotland. It's a it's a six hour drive, you know. Hmm. Anywhere in the UK is 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 close, relatively speaking. I mean, you're in the from the US, you know, you could drive for a week and I don't know, I don't know how, how long it takes to drive across the US. A, a long time, it, yeah, you it, know. It would be about a week, probably. So we can drive to just amazing coastlines, amazing mountains. You know, we've got. Cornwall on the south coast it's amazing beaches and rugged rocky coastlines we've got Wales which has got more of that as well as mountains and waterfalls and then we've got Scotland which is just insane incredible landscapes you know so it's it's all on the doorstep and I don't explore enough of it you know I think it's only over the last sort of five years I'm really starting to track where I've been where I'm going to and that's another addiction of mine, just plotting, <laughs> plotting locations and planning trips. And I spend a lot of time doing that. I mean, we go to, we're going to Scotland for, for two weeks in the camper van um, in a few weeks' time. And again, we're, we're, we're going to an area we haven't been to. Um, but for once, I've not actually planned this trip. We're just going to hit the road 
and just go and just see see where it takes us, which is again is something slightly different for me again, because I'm usually been quite meticulous at planning trips. I'll know compositions I, I want to to shoot. And actually this time we're just we're just going and 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 seeing what we can find, which will be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. It should be good yeah, fun. Be fun. I don't know. I can't I can't wait to follow along. That sounds incredible. That's like the ultimate definition of just living in the moment right there. Like you got your van, you have no plan. Hey, that could be like a t-shirt or something. Van with no plan. <laughs> van with no plan. <laughs> a oh, sticker. Man, a hat, I don't know. Whatever. Van with van no, no plan. plan. Maybe you got, you'll have to use that hashtag during your trip. Um, you're welcome. Yes. Give, so, give so, me credit yeah. every time you use it. No. Anyone listen, um, follow along with hashtag van with no plan. <laughs> van with no. That's hilarious. Cheesy. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, no, it's going to be sick. When, when is that again? So if anyone listening wants to follow along. Uh, we go uh, from the 12th of September. Oh, very soon. Cool. At somewhat yeah. photo. Follow along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. That That's going to be an incredible trip. That's so cool. Um, well, we're getting pretty low on time here, but I want to ask you what your two more questions. Number one, what's what's been your craziest, coolest, most memorable adventure? It could be somewhere that photography took you or not. It could be totally unrelated to photography, but I always get inspired just hearing the stories that you know, people tell it, even if it's nothing grand, it's like, you know, yeah. again, adventure in your own backyard, but let's hear it, that. It, I think it will be. I think, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one because I, like I said, I tend to have a lot of what I consider as sort of mini adventures. You know, it's, it's not about the, the long trip. It's about an event on either. It could be a, a day on a, a big trip or, or, or just a day out of a small trip. You know, I think for me, it's, I really enjoy like camping in winter and every time I camp in the snow, I'm, I'm vastly unprepared because when we do have snow, it, it doesn't, doesn't last for long in the UK unless you go to sort of the far reaches of Scotland. And I think just before lockdown, we had, we had some snow and uh, I made a trip to Snowdonia, which is in Wales. And there was, it was quite busy during the day. It's quite a popular hiking route. Um, but we're hiking in the snow in the sun you're quite warm. It's, you, you know, you're, you're actually walking in t-shirts actually some of the time, but we, uh, as soon as the sun drops and it drops at what, 4 PM in winter in the UK, we were camped fairly high up in the snow. I've never been so cold <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> I was shivering from 4 PM till about 7 30 AM the following morning. And it was just like the longest, coldest night of my life. I needed, I needed to go to the toilet. I didn't want to get up. Uh, we were meant to be shooting astrophotography. It was, perfect conditions for it i couldn't get out. i couldn't bear to get out i had those those hand warmers you know those ones you crack and i was shoving them down my trousers down my socks just trying to keep warm and you know it's things like that actually i didn't i didn't get many photos but it was the it was a memorable memorable trip it, it doesn't sound necessarily anything impressive but for me i i look back and i go that was a fun trip you know it's an but adventure it's an adventure right? and all these things are whether you you know i've got many many trips of just wandering around in the darkness taking photos they're all fun you know exploring mines and old quarries in in the uk you know and and it's like almost like man-made caving systems you know and there's so many things and e each of these little things are adventures you know it doesn't have to be anything impressive it's it's just memorable events that you think that was that was fun i really enjoyed that you know and that's it's not about necessarily the photo you come back with or photos you come back with you don't always take him, you know, it's just about mm -hmm. enjoying, enjoying being there. I think that's the main thing. Totally. You got into it from photography, but then photography yeah. got you more into the outdoors. So now it almost sounds the like it's the other way around the vicious cycle. Now you're actually going out there to, it sounds crazy, but you're actually going out there <laughs> to enjoy it and not just get the photo. Right. Um, yeah. That's really cool. Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, they say, they say, referencing what you said a few minutes ago about, you know, you get back from a 24 hour, you know, nonstop shooting trip. And then you just want to, you just want to get that SD card popped in the computer and start editing. It's like they say, when you're, when you found something you're truly passionate about, you forget about time, you forget it, you forget to eat, you forget to drink, you know, you'll literally kill yourself over this thing. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like photography is that thing for you. Photography in combination with adventure yeah exploring traveling the outdoors so that's super inspiring with that being said final final cue here 
What are some parting words for the listeners? Advice of any kind, really. Someone who's looking to become a better photographer, uh, you know, a better traveler, adventurer, anything like that. If you had to drop think, one piece of advice here, what would that be? In, in terms of photography, just take as many photos as you can. You know, uh, like I said, how many hundreds of thousand photos I've probably taken over, over time. You know, it, it, if I'm honest, it didn't feel like it came natural to me at first. I've worked and I've learned to understand it. And it's it, it's taken time. You know, it's taken, I'm, st- I'm always, everyone's learning. I'm still learning, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm my harshest critic often enough, but I find that that sort of drives me forward as well you know maybe, maybe i shouldn't be maybe my advice should be don't be too hard on yourself but you know i think take as many photos as you can just keep shooting and, and don't worry about what other people are doing just just do you you know it, it might be a people f- might feel like they should be doing what other people do on instagram but just do you if you like it that's good you know and and develop from there just just keep shooting and editing and editing that's incredible and advice. Editing. That's incredible advice, man. Well, before we end here, you want to uh, plug any of your socials or website or anything like that? Feel free yeah. to do so. Uh, Tom Watt Photo. So across all platforms, feel free to follow and get in touch. Easy enough. Right on, man. Well, this was a blast. Uh, I think I, I'm stoked. I'm inspired. I know a ton of people will be too. I have a million other questions I want to ask and we could probably chat all day, but it's probably <laughs> about 11 p.m. for you now. So I'll let you go to bed. Uh, we have about a six hour time difference here. So it's quite late for Tom. So I'm going to let him get to bed here. But uh, thank, you, man. thank you guys so much for listening. Tom, thanks for coming on. It was a Anytime. blast. I, uh, I feel inspired to go out and shoot and, and adventure. And that's always the goal. So thanks, man. Thank you. That was an awesome episode. (laughs) I hope you came out of that as excited as I was. I think Tom spoke about so many topics that all of us creators can relate with. I mean, there were multiple times in there where he just hit it in the feels for me. Like I just resonated with some of the stories that he was talking about. And, And I really think that a lot of you that are listening will too. So that was amazing. Tom, thanks again so much for coming on. I had a blast. I learned a lot and I'm feeling inspired. If you enjoyed this here podcast and you want more adventure inspiration, creative inspiration, and you're not already following Adventure Labs on Instagram, our handle is at Adventure Labs, easy enough. Feel free to head over there, join our community, daily inspiration, daily tips, tricks, Uh, stories on becoming a better creator. If you want to take it one step further, you should check out our weekly creator newsletter delivered directly to your inbox. And to get on that, just go to adventurelabs.co, not .com, but adventurelabs.co slash creator newsletter. Pop in your name and email. You're going to get access to that as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, keep adventuring, keep creating, keep being passionate and loving what you do because at the end of the day that's all that matters you gotta love what you're doing you just have to here at adventure labs we appreciate each and every one of you who tunes into the podcast every single week continues to share your work with us on instagram which by the way if you tag us at adventure labs in your photos we feature work every friday it's a good time if you have photos you're posting on instagram you want features do that we appreciate you stopping by being a part of the community thank you thank you thank you see you in the next one